My name's Serena Bellissimo. Um, I know that introduction was a bit over the top, but I just wanted to get your attention. I'm coming to you from a, at an Irish garden. Um, I just wanted to do my presentation out here just to show you that it doesn't always rain in Ireland. There can be sun sometimes. Having said that, there are some grey cl clouds in the sky, so we better get this going. I apologise for the background noise. Hopefully it's not too annoying. Um, I should tell you a little bit about myself. I started my career in Australia as a high school teacher. Um, I did that for about a year and a half before I decided that I wanted to work with young people but I also wanted to combine my love of media. So I, a lot of my work was at places like the Immigration Museum, Cook's Cottage and my final job was at the Australian Red Cross where I was able to um, combine my media skills, my love for media, so like do newsletters and um, do video presentations for students and also working with young people doing leadership programs. So I really enjoyed that. But I married an Irishman so we thought we'd come over to Ireland for a year, four and a half years ago, and just give it, give things a go here. So I remember before leaving Australia, I'd say to all my family and friends, over a few drinks that, you know, when I get to Ireland, I'm really going to give this media career a go because that's what I always wanted to do. And I bet you I'm going to have my own show and I'm also going to have Bono from U2 on the show. Imagine my surprise when this actually happened. We're at the premiere of U2 3D. I'm so excited. This is a dream come true for me. I finally get to chat to Bono, Edge, Larry Mullen and Adam Clayton. I can't wait. What's it like seeing yourself on the big screen? Hey, look, it's taken me 20 years to get photographers to make me look this tall. If you thought our heads were big, wait, wait till we get to the IMAX. To say that I was excited, that's an understatement. I remember walking down to the red carpet just pinching myself and texting people in Oz going, you're never going to believe this, but I'm about to interview Bono on the red carpet for my own TV show. How does that happen? Well, I'll tell you how that happened in my case anyway. Four and a half years ago, I got here to Ireland. I started working in the NGO sector. And one day as I was walking to work, there was an ad on the radio saying they were looking for a co-host for a movie show and just throwing the application. Now, I knew that lots of people would be applying for it and I had no idea whether or not I'd get the position. But you know what? I, I've got nothing to lose. Let's just throw in a resume. So that's what I did. I just threw in a resume. And luckily enough for me, I got an audition. However, unfortunately, I didn't get the position, but I was told that they'd put me on a panel. Now, I'm sure we've all heard that before, and I sat there rolling my eyes going, yeah, put you on a panel, never going to hear from them again. Well, I didn't hear from them, so a month later, I took matters into my own hands, and I sent them an email to say, hi, just following up, you know, still really interested in this, happy to do anything, you know, come in to do reviews, do interviews, whatever you'd like me to do. The next day, I got a phone call saying, would you be interested in flying over to London for a movie premiere and interviewing some of the cast of Hairspray. Interested, I, well, I tried to contain my scream, but I got very excited, didn't even have to think about it, said yes straight away, went over to London, and that was basically the start of the career. They liked what they heard in the interview, and um, they were happy for me to come in, come on board and do more and more interviews and do more and more movie reviews. Um, as a result, I was able to start networking and oh, I was also able to interview people like um, Nicolas Cage and Daniel, uh, Daniel Craig. I know I'm name dropping here, but it was just, it was so exciting because I've always been into movies. Um, through my networks, I found out that there was a movie show on TV and they were looking for hosts. So one of my friends kindly put my name forward and I followed it up and was again called in for an audition. This time I thought I'd be a little bit different though. I thought instead of just turning up for the audition, I'd put together a presentation to show what I'd like to do on this movie show. And I think that's what got me to, well I know, I was told that's what got me to the next step. It wasn't because I just turned up, They, I, I gave them more than they expected. So I turned up with 
a plan, a PowerPoint presentation, it's very Australian, a PowerPoint presentation, sat them down and go, went, this is how I foresee the movie show being. And I never once thought for some reason that I wouldn't get the position. I was talking about it like it was mine. Thankfully, I did get the, the position and I was co-hosting the show with two other friends and it was... A year, it was one of the most exciting years of my life. Hard work, but got to do so much. Got to do interviews, fly over to London more, um, do movie reviews. It was a year where I did what I loved. So here's a couple of um, people that I spoke to. My mother's maiden name is Finnegan. Okay, so there's an Irish connection. So I might be a little Irish. Where's she from? My mother's maiden name is Sullivan. <laughs> Get out. Are you lying? We Okay. Sullivan and uh, Finnegan. Sullivan and Finnegan so together again. In the movie, Emma's a love doctor and she gives love advice to people across New York. Um, what's the best piece of advice, romantic or otherwise, that you've ever given or that you've ever received? Well, in the movie, I give wonderful, empowering, pro-woman, you know, <laughs> find the right mate, excellent advice, which slightly backfires on the character. But I have to say, in real life, I probably have never taken advice that I should have. Do any of us <laughs> I think none of us do. Um, you know, I don't think passionate people take advice. You know, everyone's talking about the fact that this is a stoner comedy. Yeah. I say this is a bit of a, a male Thelma and Louise. Yeah, that's a male good way bonding. Yeah, yeah. 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 Been in this business for a while now. Do you still get excited? By I it? think I'm more excited by the business now than I've ever been. It was hard work but it was so much fun and it actually didn't feel like work because it was something that I loved to do. The thing is, once you get your dream, the hardest thing I found is holding on to your dream. Unfortunately, the station I was working for got taken over and all Irish programs were taken off the air and they just went to putting on a whole heap of um, American and English programs. So while I was devastated. It was time to start reinventing myself, thinking about other ways to be able to do, keep working in this industry. So luckily for me, that year that I was on the air, on TV, I also kept up my radio work. So I was able to go back and slip back into my radio job because I hadn't left it. But I also started to pick up some other radio jobs. And I also had to start thinking outside the movie box because there weren't many movie jobs going. So I started to reinvent myself and put myself forward for many different roles. And this is how people are now seeing me. And on our final panel of the week, she's worked in the Red Cross, is originally from Australia, but now calls Dublin home. It's journalist and has a wonderful name, Serena Bellissimo. Husbands in Ireland, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, and you're going to have more and more of them uh, with the way the unemployment situation is. Yeah, why not? But isn't I, it great for kids to see that there's no typical role, that yeah. your role is whatever you want your role to be, yeah. and it's not all about what society tells you you have to do? Well, certainly. Yeah, do. so... There we go, there's my piece. Now, there's always change, and so it's all about embracing change, as everybody knows. And my latest change is, I need to stand up for this, is this. I'm actually pregnant at the moment. So while it's exciting and happy, there's also a bit of um, fear going on inside me because I don't, especially being freelance, I don't want to be forgotten while I've got those few months off work. So what I've started to do now is just basically set stuff up so I won't be forgotten. You know, letting people know that yes, I will be back. Yes, I'm off to have a baby. But yeah, I can still do the career thing when I come back. So um, I've also started using social media to my advantage, taken to Twitter, started up a page, not telling people, hey, I'm having a sandwich now, but using it from a professional point of view. So updating people on what movies are out, putting my reviews up there in 140 characters or less is very hard to do, but I'm trying to do that. Giving people um, entertainment news and keeping, like, just keeping my networks abreast of what's happening. So there you have it. That's what I've been up to. Um, being over here in Ireland has shown me that, yeah, you know, if you just set your mind to what you want, go for your goals, it can happen. Just stick to it. It really can happen. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, hopefully uh, after this, I'll be Skyping you live. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thanks very much, guys. Enjoy the rest of the International Women's Day Conference.